Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you my top five books that I read over the fall season. So the way these videos are structured is basically I go through all of the books that I read from September, October, and November, their rating, and then at the end, I will go in more detail about the books that made my top five list. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So starting out in September, I first read The Madness of Crowds by Louise Penny, which I gave a five out of five stars. Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo, which I gave a 3.5 out of five stars. Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars, and Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, which I also gave a 3 out of 5 stars. So moving on to the month of October, I first read Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which I also gave 4 out of 5 stars, The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis, which I gave also a 4 out of 5 stars, the Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornich, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. And When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean, which I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars. And lastly, moving on to December, I first read A Man Called Ove by Frederick Backman, which I gave a 2 out of 5 stars. The Orphan Collector by Ellen Rain Wiseman, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars and Feel Your Way Through by Kelsey Ballerini, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. So I'm just going to start with the obvious <laughs> book here, and it is The Madness of Crowds by Louise Petty. This is the newest installment in the Inspector Gamache series, and this series is near and dear to my heart. I think it is my favorite series of all time, and so when this one came out earlier this year, I like as soon as I saw that it was on the library catalog, like I put it on hold and I was able to get it the week that it came out, so I was like on the ball there. but. This one was very interesting. I think like it, I was reading the author's note after um, I finished it and she was talking about how she started writing this kind of right at the beginning of the pandemic. And initially she didn't want to incorporate the COVID-19 pandemic into this fictional world. But as you know, we, the pandemic progressed, she realized that this wasn't something that you couldn't, you like couldn't ignore in kind of our present day time so she decided to put these characters in a post-covid world everyone has gotten the vaccine has been immunized you know that is like basically wishful thinking at this point because a lot of people are still hesitant but it's wishful thinking but kind of life has gone back to normal but the repercussions of the pandemic and things that have been kind of exacerbated by the pandemic have um kind of are still we're still dealing with the aftermath of it so basically Gamache is tasked to protect this speaker who was initially hired by the Canadian government to kind of look into how we could improve and kind of minimize the social economical um, repercussions that the pandemic has caused. And her finding is basically that those who either have, you know, developmental, you know, uh, problems, have special needs, are elderly, have certain diseases, we should euthanize them as a way to kind of progress our society forward. And obviously Gamash is very much against her message, but she is he is tasked with kind of protecting her when she's giving one of the speeches at the local schools. Um, she's very much kind of raises a lot of a lot of dialogue that Trump has kind of said throughout his presidency and kind of the pandemic, so it draws a lot of parallels to that. Um, but obviously a murder takes place and it kind of goes off from there, but I think this was handled so well. Like, not only was the murder aspect in here really interesting, but it raised a lot of important discussion and dialogue of kind of the social, like, issues that have been kind of brought to the spotlight because of the pandemic and I felt like they kind of she handled this in a very important way obviously she's very much against that message and how you know like all those things and how everyone is worth fighting for um, but it was very interesting seeing these characters tackle a post-covid world which 
as like nearly two years into this it's very much kind of seems like this fantastic like fantasy world of like a post-covid world so it was very interesting seeing that but i obviously loved the kind of aspect and how she handled the pandemic in here and just seeing how these characters were dealing with the aftermath of the pandemic was really interesting because a lot of like tv shows have integrated like a COVID world into their stories, but this was my first time reading a book that tackled what we've been going through for the last few years. So it was very interesting seeing that. And obviously the series just gets better and better. Next up, I have one of the Tales and Teacups book club picks. I believe this was for September and October, and it is The Secret, Secret History by Donna Tart. This is a book that was gifted to me by a subscriber uh, last year, and I've been holding out. I've been wanting to make this one of the book club picks kind of around school time, so hence why it was kind of September, October. But this book is very much praised for its um, kind of like starting the deck, the, dark academia kind of uh, literary fiction world and so this book follows a uh, group of students who go to this New England University and when the book starts out we know that one member of the group has been murdered and so the first kind of half of the book is eventually the lead up to the events of the murder and then the other half of the book deals with Kind of the repercussions and aftermath and the consequences of those actions and i can see why this book has inspired a lot of the dark academia craze that we've been kind of seeing now and you can see how pivotal it was in that movement and i really enjoyed this this book is a bit of a slow burn and you kind of it's very interesting because not only do you feel like you have like an unreliable narrator but you are always on like on edge trying to pick up subtle clues as to why this character is being murdered and you're told within the first like page or so who's been murdered so you are very aware of what is going to happen and so you're trying to piece together the events that ultimately lead to that which is a lot of fun I just thought this was a very interesting book and it's very intriguing too because none of these characters are very likable like you don't like them at all but you're still very intrigued to find out what happened to them and so yeah this one is definitely I would say like a very modern classic and all that so I did really enjoy this I think this is a perfect book to read during the fall time like especially when school is starting and you just want to be cozy in your like fall sweater and all those things by the fire reading this book with you know a hot apple cider and there might be some salted caramel vodka in there who knows but if you want to read something that has been so pivotal in kind of dark academia if you like that stuff then i think this is the book for you next up this is one that took me by surprise and it is crooked kingdom by lee bordugo i feel like the grisha verse has been very much hit or miss for me i did like enjoy the grisha trilogy when i first read it but going back i did like when i reread it with my friend i didn't enjoy it as much and the same for six of crows like it was Good, but I did have a lot of problems with its execution but this book I think has really made me change my mind about kind of the future installments in the Grisha verse this I can't go too much into it because oops because it is the second book that way apparently there's gonna be a third one so the second book in this trilogy um, but I was like I said, I was pleasantly surprised and I think my main criticism for Six of Crows was that I felt like the narration style was very disjointed and because you were introduced to a lot of these characters, you'd get a chapter told from a character's perspective and five pages would be plot progression and 20 pages would be character background. So I felt like the narration was very disjointed in terms of plot progression and so because we have all this character background already, the plot was able to kind of go forward and I'm sure you guys already know the premise of this but it follows a group of kind of misfits who are on a heist and this is kind of their you know second uh, heist thing that took place like I said I was pleasantly surprised with how much I liked this because I know this series is well loved and I reading Six of Crows when it came out I just didn't realize what the hype was about but now with this one I can see why 
everyone is obsessed with this series and yeah this one like the stakes were higher like I was just so connected to these characters and what they were going through I felt like we just hit the ground gr running from the beginning and I was spoiled with what happens in this one with one character so I wasn't taken aback by it but I was just surprised how abruptly this ended and how we did not get closure and I know originally when this came out it was supposed to be a duology but now we're getting another one so I think that probably explains it but yeah I think this is like my favorite part of the Grishaverse and if you did not like Six of Crows I recommend pushing through and reading this because like I said I was very skeptical but I ended up really enjoying it. Next up we have another book club pick and again I'm happy that we had like we ended the year with two good book club picks because I feel like we just had really a rough go in the beginning half of 2021 and so hopefully we can keep this momentum going into the new year um, but yeah this is one that has been on my shelf for a while and it was just a very eye-opening read and it is The uh, Orphan Collector by Ellen Marie Wiseman and this is a book that takes place during the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 and so we follow this girl um, named Pia who is from a Ger German immigrant family her father is off fighting in World War one and her mother is the one that's taking care of her and her two twin uh, brothers who are kind of infant age and so when her mother ends up passing away from the Spanish flu Pia is the left taking care of her siblings so when she needs to go out to find food for you know her brother and herself her brothers end up being taken by this woman who is very xenophobic she blames the immigrants for the reason why the pandemic is going on she blames them for the death of her son who also contracted the Spanish flu because if the immigrants weren't there in her mind she would not have been turned away at the hospital because they were so overwhelmed so um, she's very xenophobic and so when Pia comes back she's trying to figure out what happened to her brothers like she blames herself and it kind of goes off from there and this one was very intriguing from multiple standpoints not only does this take place in a pandemic um like and I was able so because this takes place during a pandemic like you can draw so many parallels between what these characters are going through and what we were kind of going through at the beginning of the pandemic and it was just very interesting kind of reliving that even though this takes place over a hundred years ago there the parallels were just astonishing like astounding like it was just crazy so just kind of drawing the parallels between that and the author is very blunt she doesn't sugarcoat kind of the brutal reality of this pandemic and so it's a very difficult book to read especially with all like the despair that is going on especially with Pia and her life so it was very difficult to read that but you're just really kind of motivated and you want to know what happens to Pia with just everything she has to overcome and persevere through so yeah like this one was really well done the reason why I didn't give this a five out of five stars because I felt like we had this buildup that lasted like 340 pages long finding out what happened to Pia's well we do know what happens to Pia's brothers but for Pia figuring out what happened to her brothers um but it just ended so quickly like I felt like it resolved itself in like 20 pages and I felt like if it maybe had been kind of dragged out maybe 30 or 40 more pages longer I would have enjoyed it a lot better because it was like all this build up and be like that was it <laughs> but I really wish like they kind of didn't end as abruptly but nevertheless I still really love this this is a really solid historical fiction um, so yeah if you want to find something that can, you can like draw parallels to the past like two years then I think this is a really good book to read and lastly I have the feel your way through poetry collection by Kelsey Ballerini um, I am NOT a big poetry person I hated it when we had to analyze poetry at school and I don't read poetry for fun so this one was very much stepping outside my comfort zone um, in particular but because I'm a big Kelsey Ballerini fan I really love her music I was like you know what it's probably very her lyrics are probably very similar to this poetry so I'm gonna give it a go and I really like this actually like 
like you it's very personal i thought this was very well written it is a good collection of poems like they cover different points of her life so when she's a kid when she's in high school you know kind of starting out her career where she is now um, in her life was really interesting and there are trigger warnings for gun violence and eating disorders in here just so you're aware but I like I said I really enjoyed this and I'm not someone who likes poetry I do I think like part of it too is like I don't under like in my mind when I read it I don't I can never figure out the cadence of how it's supposed to read because there isn't any like periods or like pauses or like know how to read it in your mind um so this is one if once the audiobook comes out from the library i definitely would pick this one up on audiobook so i can like hear it how she is supposed to be seeing it but i was able to figure it out it just took me a while i think my favorite there were a lot of ones in here that i loved i think kangaroo was my favorite poem in here and it's actually probably one of the longest ones as well which uh, talks about her struggle with an eating disorder um, and yeah it was really heartbreaking to read but yeah I think there's a poem in here that everyone can find something that they relate to and yeah I really love this like I said I thought this was really well done and I'm not a big poetry person but yeah kangaroo was my favorite and then there was also I didn't have like any tab things to like mark up the ones that I like so I definitely will have to go back and do that but yeah like I said for someone who doesn't like poetry this is the poetry book for people who don't like poetry so that's it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite books were from this autumn season and all of that fun stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time bye guys